So now the last vertebrate circulatory pattern that we want to focus on are of the mammals and birds. So we'll entitle the next flowchart Vertebrate Circulatory Patterns 3. And what we'll look at, of course, are specifically what the mammals and birds possess. Both mammals and birds are also, like the amphibians, going to have a double circulatory pattern, double circulation throughout their cardiovascular system. But there's going to be a distinct difference between the double circulation of mammals and birds and that of amphibians. First and foremost, we have to look at the structure of the heart. In both mammals and birds, what we notice is four-chambered heart. Both will have a very highly efficient four-chambered heart. And here, the four-chambered heart will possess two atria, and also two ventricles. So a right and left atria and a right and left ventricle. This is going to follow a double circuit. But what we want to state specifically about the double circuit within mammals and birds compared to the amphibian one is that in this situation there will also be a systemic circuit and in this time, uh, in this uh, circulation, it's actually called systemic, much like the amphibian, but it's now also called a pulmonary, no longer pulmocutaneous circuit. So there's a systemic circuit and a pulmonary circuit. Both of them, both circuits, are going to be completely separate from one another. They will never intertwine or mix. So they are both completely separate. This is going to be a very important distinction between mammals and birds, mammals, birds versus amphibians because of the increased efficiency that a mammal and bird circulation, circulatory pattern has. When you completely separate a systemic circuit from a pulmonary circuit, what you see here is going to be the specific uh, complete separation of oxygenated and deoxygenated blood. Never will you have that mixing problem that we saw previously in amphibians. So what we now want to just focus on is the fact that this is all going to be summarized in figure 42.4c. We won't get into the details of this circuit just yet. We'll focus on that when we look at the human heart. But I want to make sure that we understand and remember before we get to the human heart is the following two things. These are critical to understand anything about circulation. You have to have to understand that, and I've been saying this many times to sort of drive home this point. You have to remember that arteries themselves always are going to be associated as blood vessels that bring blood away from the heart. Arteries away, away from the heart. That's what classifies them as an artery. Not whether or not they're oxygenated or deoxygenated. Don't think of arteries like that. Think of them in terms of the direction of blood flow. Do not think of them as an oxygenated or deoxygenated blood vessel. That can lead to problems when we look at the actual heart flow and a flow of blood through the heart. In contrast, you have veins. And again, we've been saying this over and over and this is purposeful. Veins will bring blood not away from the heart but towards the heart. And you need to need to know both of these facts. And you need to remember that this is both, again, not about the oxygen versus deoxygenated blood. It's all about direction. Okay? All about direction of blood. Is it going towards the heart or away from the heart? That's how you classify, successfully and clearly classify whether something's an artery or a vein not oxygenated versus deoxygenated. Take a look at figure 42.5. There are about 11 steps to the circulatory pattern seen in most mammals and birds. We're going to be basically now focusing on those steps as we go through the human heart.